after witnessing the lack of connective technology in the maternal care field through the lived experiences of her mother's work as a labor and delivery nurse. Our next guest made it her life's mission to make it easy for payers, providers, and patients to coordinate comprehensive prenatal and postpartum health care from anywhere. Melissa Hanna, CEO of Mommy, joins us to discuss the national crisis of mothers and babies falling through the cracks of our fragmented healthcare system, how preventable issues are not being caught fast enough because of siloed patient data, and how her startup's rapid growth is coming to the rescue. Join us to learn how Melissa and the Mommy team connect the dots between patients, practitioners, and data, and how you can get involved in their inspiring work and mission. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Melissa, welcome to our podcast. I'm honored to have you on today. It's great to be here. Thank you. Well, given your passion and belief that equitable access to health care for women and children is a challenge that we can all solve by creatively working together, I'm fired up for this important conversation today. But before we jump in, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast. You will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli and Apple Podcasts Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Clubhouse in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, Melissa, it's almost time for our community to learn how you and the mommy team are building a comprehensive prenatal and postpartum care coordination platform that increases positive health outcomes for moms and babies, which also includes Serena Williams and Mark Cuban as investors. How cool is that? But first, I'm going to randomly select an icebreaker question so we can get to know you personally. Oh, we're talking hobby. What's that one thing you love to do outside of building mommy? What's that one love? Oh, I love reading. I'm usually reading a few books at a time. Any free time I get, that's what I'm doing. It always begs the question, are you audio book kind of woman or is it a hard, is it Kindle? So my sister, she loves the actual paper of a book. What is it for you? Yeah, me too. I love that. I mean, I'll mark them up and annotate and ask questions in the margins as I'm reading. And yeah, love collecting books. Do you have a Kindle? Do you like it? I flipped a Kindle a couple of years ago. I love it. I do have a Kindle and I haven't been using it lately. I think that it's been fun to just rotate through having a few different books on my nightstand and taking a break if I can during the day and reading for a few minutes it helps clear my brain before I get into my next task for the day. But yeah, I mean, I love Kindle too. And I haven't really gotten into audiobooks as much, but I think that when I start commuting again, you know, in the near future, post-pandemic, I might start picking that up. Yeah. I never got into audiobooks myself quite yet. Maybe I just got to go and give it a try, but yeah, I flipped over to Kindle. I got to tell you, it's a great space saver, especially when traveling. When we used to do that, remember those days when we used to get on a plane and whatnot, but yeah, no, I'm right there with you too. I love reading. I love my books, but love my Kindle, but hey, totally get it in regards to the actual paper bound books. Nothing wrong with that at all. So Thank you for sharing your love of reading, Melissa. And I'm looking forward to discussing your incredible journey and mission with mommy after we get back from thanking our community champion sponsor. Located in Denver, Colorado's nationally ranked River North District, Catalyst is a healthcare innovation campus that brings together stakeholders from across the industry to accelerate innovation and drive real, lasting change our nation desperately needs. From established organizations to startups, from accelerators to advocacy organizations, and from medical schools to global companies, everyone at Catalyst works side by side to create, develop, refine, and bring to market cutting edge innovations that will fundamentally transform healthcare as we know it. With industry leaders like Medical Group Management Association, Olive, Medical Solutions, UC Health, Cirrus MD, and many others calling Catalyst home, along with innovative pioneers visiting from across the nation. Catalyst continually fosters their foundational belief that collaboration and partnerships will move the healthcare industry forward. To virtually tour Catalyst and claim your space on campus or host an upcoming event, visit catalysthealthtech.com or visit the top of the episode notes and click on their link. 
All right, we are back with Melissa Hanna, CEO of Mommy. Melissa, we have a lot to cover today. You have been on one heck of a journey. We have some mutual friends, actually. I was talking with Taylor McPartland a little while ago, a CEO of Scale Health, and you guys are a part of that community. Our efforts over here at Olive, we're also excited with a recent partnership announcement in working with Scale Health. A lot of great things happening there. And in regards to Mommy, you've been at it now for over seven years. What a journey. Can't wait to dive in on it. So take us back a bit though, Melissa. How did this all start in the first place? What were those aha moments? Jumping off that entrepreneurial cliff, it's scary, right? If you're not a little scared and a little anxious about doing it, I believe you're not doing it right. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but you did it and here you are seven plus years later. How did it all come to be in the first place? Well, I started building Mommy when I was still in grad school, going for a JD and an MBA in Los Angeles. And I began working in tech years before then straight out of college, I began working for early stage tech companies. And I was really focused on education technology in particular, always with a lens on social impact and using technology to amplify impact projects and socially focused efforts around the country. I thought that technology would be a really great lever for many of the initiatives that I was seeing come up around supporting students and not just K through 12, but in college and community college and trade schools and beyond. And just that there was such a way to democratize access to education. That's where I began my entrepreneurial journey was working for a number of really great leaders that were very inspiring and very passionate about their social impact efforts. And what I kept seeing and became sort of a pattern and a theme for me in my own career was that in doing work that really centered folks that had been historically marginalized, isolated, not receiving full access to the support, attention, and resources that were otherwise out there, that the through line was that there were a lot of people that wanted to help and wanted to be involved, but didn't necessarily have the tools or the connectivity to work together to really move the needle. To be more specific, I found myself working on a lot of multi-stakeholder platforms in my early career in education technology. And so this definitely informed my view early on of what technology could do and the kind of impact it could have, but that first and foremost, you needed to bring a lot of different kinds of people to the table. By the time I got to grad school, I was really focused on developing those practical skills that were needed to be a non-technical hire in any early stage company. You got to know how to broker deals. You have to know how to create pro formas and work alongside the founders to really hammer out the vision and bring it to life and just do whatever needed to be done around the company. I thought, oh, you know, going for a law degree and a business degree would give me the combo kit (laughs) that I needed to really help bring some of these great ideas to life. I did not expect to build my own startup while I was going through grad school. And here I am. What happened? Well, (laughs) my mother is a nurse and lactation consultant and very well respected in her profession and very well known for having just designed and led some of the most successful maternal health care programs in the country. And she'd done this for very large healthcare organizations, but she also had done this on her own. One of the hallmarks of her career is that she'd go from a really large health system designing out a comprehensive maternity healthcare program to setting that up, getting that to fly, and then leaving to go start small again and build from the ground up and build a local program that could fill in the gaps in whatever couldn't be achieved at the large scale in enterprise organization. You know, go back to the community and build what's needed on the ground there. I just had sort of overexposure to maternal and infant health care through my own mother's career throughout my life. And as I started taking classes in grad school around impact, around education, and I sort of started looking into healthcare as another place where I was interested in understanding what was possible there, a light bulb went off really. And it was the beginning of an idea that was really a question about whether or not the lessons from education technology and multi-stakeholder platforms could be applied in healthcare. What was possible there if we started to think about integration at the community level versus just at the technology level? How do we integrate people and teams together, not just the data itself? That led me to researching what was out there. And There certainly were a lot of very impressive solutions that had already been designed, launched, and gone public, you know, across healthcare IT to date, but not in the vertical of maternal and child healthcare. It just seemed like everything I found was sort of in a different category. 
And that led me to sort of reach back out to my mom on this. She knew I was sort of going through this journey and I was trying to come up with a solution there. And she'd said, yeah, you know, it'd be really great if you could find something that I could use for my team. I'm looking for this kind of software for my own staff and it's difficult to find. And we're having to cobble together a lot of different kinds of solutions to create a tool that could allow us to not just connect with our patients directly on an ongoing and really personalized basis, but also connect with each other, all of the colleagues, all of the professionals that are supporting the same mother baby dyad, regardless of what healthcare organization they're in. We're all taking care of the same mom and baby at the end of the day. How do we communicate with each other seamlessly? So this was the question she had been asking. And ultimately we came together to answer that question by building mommy. I came back to her one day and I remember sitting with her at at lunch. We, We went out to lunch together and I pitched her on this idea. And I said, mom, I think we might have to build this. And that was not something my mom wanted to hear. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, she had been a nurse in hospitals for much of her life. And she was there in the very early days. She was part of the nursing team that was working on the implementation of Epic at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I don't have to tell you how long ago that was. In her career, she had already seen the ups and downs of building, of designing and implementing software in healthcare and said, I do not think you want to get involved in this. She said, go do anything else with your life. Talking about that entrepreneurial cliff that we all have to jump off of at some point if we really want to commit to our visions and build something, that was that moment for me. I said, you know what, mom? I'm not going to take your advice on this. I want to go do this. I think that this really could be something in the market. Unbelievable. Wow. What a backstory. And you really set it up perfectly. And in a moment, we're going to dive into exactly what mommy is, what you guys have built. And of course, where you guys are heading, where do you see the market heading? Right. I mean, let's just even just look at the past 14, 15 months. A lot has just changed just because of the pandemic. We're seeing a lot of innovation coming out of the health tech, digital health ecosystem, which is phenomenal. And so we'll go there as well, talk about what you're seeing on the horizon, future state, and where you see the company heading. But I want to go back to something you said that was so important before we dive into specifically what you built at Mommy. And it was this notion of, I didn't realize that I was going to become a tech founder, right? And that happens a lot. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's a brilliant way to message like, hey, there is a need here. No one else is solving it. I'm going to go do it. Just like you said, mom was like, nope, nope, don't do it. You're like, I'm all in, right? Before we go and talk about mommy, I'm going to put you on the spot. For the aspiring entrepreneurs that tune into this podcast or part of this amazing community built around it, what is one or two lessons learned early days when Melissa jumped off that cliff as a founder, as an entrepreneur that you can share with some of our entrepreneurs that are wanting to be you? and wanting to build a company like yours. What are one or two of those tidbits that you can share? Oh gosh, well, there are probably so many (laughs) if you give me long enough to think about it, but a few things that come to mind right away as lessons from early on in this journey. There's something practical that I do share with early stage founders or, or folks that are aspiring and say, you know, I have an idea, should I pursue it and how? Is something very practical. You mentioned that I've been building Mommy for about seven years now. The reality is that the first year and a half was really heavy research and development. And the technical age of the organization, you know, when we founded it, yeah, puts it in about seven years. But I tell founders, don't incorporate too soon. Have a plan, have a vision, have a model, and wait until you have, a, you have someone sitting across from you with a check in their hand and they want to know where to make it out to. That's when you need a business to put it in. But in fact, there was a program, it was sort of a mentorship and mini sort of accelerator, you'd say. And again, seven years ago, there are a lot of different things in the market than there are today. You know, someone said, hey, do you want to be a part of this program? We'll coach you, you're an early stage founder. We'll show you how to, you know, show you the ropes. And they said, yeah, you just have to incorporate your company. And I said, well, are you going to give us any cash? No, no, no. But you have to have a real company if you want to be in this program for us to coach you. Well, <laughs> that program's no longer around. And we still are, but I learned the lesson, which was formalize things a little bit earlier than we needed to be. I think it puts an age on the company that's not necessarily an accurate depiction of when things really got going because it took about a year and a half until we were able to launch and put a product in the market, which at that point started to pick up pretty quickly because we had spent so much time in R&D. But I do think that there's the practical side of this, which is don't incorporate too soon. The flip side is also, I mean, really, I knew I wanted to build something and I knew that it was going to be a company. And I think that once you've got that vision in your head and you can tie together the kind of impact that you want to have and the kind of value that's possible for that. And you see that that's a business that can be built, then that's the course you're on. And it's really hard to, for anyone to steer you off of that. Uh, People told me, oh, it sounds like you want to help moms and babies. Why don't you make a nonprofit? 
I said, no, this is a multi, multi multi-billion dollar industry and it's very fragmented and it needs a lot of help. And there's really an opportunity for not just a company that I'm envisioning, but for a lot of companies to have an impact in this space together. And I want to be part of that. And so I knew I was going to build a company from very early on. It was going to be a venture backed business. That is so cool. And I agree with you 100%. I think entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, take that time, find the problem in the marketplace. Don't go and build something and then go and try to find a home for it, right? The founders that I, time and again, I'm fortunate I get to mentor and advise founders like yourself and others are the ones that are absolutely incessant and just driven beyond belief to find that problem in the marketplace, understand it inside and out, backwards and forward, spending the time on the ground with the end user. That right there, that like you mentioned, that, that front end, that year and a half, powerful. It's a reminder that we all need to think about and share and really dedicate ourselves to is don't just go and build for the sake of building. Understand the problem at hand. And it sounds like you guys did exactly that. And to bring that full circle on where we are today. So those first 18 months of research and development, that was pretty much me asking providers of all stripes, including my own mother, if I could ride along for the day, if I could sit in the corner of the waiting room at their practice, if I could walk the halls of the hospital and observe and learn and understand what the challenges were from end to end, from conception all the way through baby's first year of life. What does it take to provide the best kind of maternity experience possible to a mother baby dyad? And so that observational practice today continues to manifest in the company. Every new employee that joins the company as part of their 90-day plan, it includes observational work. It doesn't matter where you're joining into the company, whether you're joining the design team or into the clinical organization, <laughs> or you're going to be working on sales or marketing, you're going to spend time in observation mode, really just appreciating what the experience is like for patients and providers in the maternal and child healthcare industry. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. It's important. And I, you know, I always want to take the time to be able to allow our other aspiring entrepreneurs to learn from people that have been there and done that. And that's exactly what you guys have been up to at Mommy. And speaking of, let's dive in. What is Mommy? What have you guys built? Give us that elevator pitch. What is Mommy? Mommy is an integrated care coordination platform providing comprehensive maternal and infant health care support to new and expecting parents across the country. And we do that by partnering with healthcare organizations of all sizes local provider groups, community-based organizations, multifaceted health systems, integrated delivery networks, and payers to ensure that there is a consistent and high-quality experience, again, from conception through baby's first year of life, for every family, for every patient that's coming through that healthcare organization and will be a patient in that organization's population. So we are doing this through very deeply established partnerships with provider organizations of all kinds. We are effectively filling in the gaps in care by working with them to figure out what's working in their patient workflows, in their patient experience, and where would they like to enhance, personalize, and improve the experience for patients, ultimately to improve the outcomes. That work requires a lot of partnership, a lot of collaboration, and it also really centers on making sure that the end user here, we're talking about new and expecting parents, get what they need out of an industry that has historically been very fragmented, very isolating, very confusing and overwhelming. And we're working with folks around the country who all share the same vision that being a new parent should not be the anxiety-ridden experience, and it should be the very high-risk experience, and in many cases, a very distressing experience that it is for families, especially for Black and Brown women that have the highest rates of maternal mortality and infant mortality, specifically Black and African-American mothers in this country. Wow. In regards to the market fit, right? We talk about that a lot, especially in healthcare technology. Is the market there, right? Is there an opportunity for reimbursement or follow that, whether it be the codes or you know, reimbursement models, et cetera? Is the market ripe for the opportunity for mommy right now? You know, you mentioned a little bit ago, somebody, a lot of folks told you, oh, go start a nonprofit. And you're like, no, this is a multi billion dollar opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity to do good and do well. But are the conditions there? How has the reception been in the marketplace with your technology? Maybe give us a little bit of that understanding in regards to where things are currently. Yes. Well, if you want to talk about the ups and downs of the entrepreneurial journey, that's a great question to lead in. I'll say that for a long time, folks told me pointedly, the market's not there and the market's not going to be there for a very long time. And you might be too early. You might have a good idea, but you might just be the company that came before the rest of the the wave of companies doing this work. And I think that there's a a fair point, fair concern in there because this industry has really lagged behind 
in regards to healthcare IT. There just has not been as much innovation. There have not been as many solutions designed for the unique vertical that is maternity. There also have not been the kinds of public-private partnerships that are essential in healthcare to driving outcomes across the socioeconomic spectrum. There have been times where we've seen private organizations really invest heavily in innovation to improve healthcare experiences for their patients or even employers now investing heavily in designing better healthcare experiences for their employees. I was told early on, whatever you do, steer away from government-focused programs, steer away from Medicaid, steer away from community-based initiatives that are state or federally funded grantees, because there's no money in that. When in fact, it's sort of the opposite. There's a lot of money in that. In fact, nearly half of all babies in this country are born into a Medicaid beneficiary or are where the mother-baby diet is receiving care that is publicly funded. So if there was ever a vertical where you did not want to, you do not want to steer away from what's happening in the public health sector, this is the one. I kind of knew that while people were describing the landscape, I would say then, today in their mind, you know, this is not where the market is. That was years ago. And I knew that that was going to have to evolve because the numbers played this out and proved this out year over year. Maternal mortality and infant mortality in the United States is an abomination. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. We have the highest maternal mortality rates of all developed nations. We've worked on our infant mortality rates. They're still far too high. And the numbers skyrocketed in particularly Black communities and Indigenous communities where there is such limited access to support to the resources that are are otherwise deemed essential in maternity and just do not necessarily exist in those communities, or there's just not as enough in those communities. So I was very aware of some issues lying below the surface of where people were talking about the market or, you know, how people describe the market. And so while I was told you're too early and this isn't really, this market's not ready yet, I knew that things were going to have to change. They would absolutely have to change. In the last few years, we've seen that. We've seen major stories reported by the New York Times, the Washington Post, USA Today has done a lot of coverage on this. We've had these major media outlets covering maternal mortality and infant mortality as serious issues in the healthcare industry. What's underlying a lot of this? High fragmentation, lack of connected technology, and sexism and racism. Honestly, these are contributing factors that cannot be denied Where this leads me to, (laughs) to get to the positive part, (laughs) I've listed out all the problems, is that now what we're seeing and what I'm seeing that I'm really excited about in this market is that there is heightened national awareness of these issues. And that is the catalyst, you know, (laughs) here to creating change. That's what's needed. Enough people need to be talking about these issues. Enough healthcare executives need to be aware that these issues exist. I've gone from being in rooms where just a couple of years ago, I would sit down with healthcare executives who would say, yes, 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 we're aware that the rates are very high across the country, but not in our hospital or not in our membership (laughs) or not in our neighborhood. And I'd say, are you not reading the paper? Like, are you not reading, you know, the reports that are coming out? But in many cases, the reality was that it wasn't actually being counted in the first place. So there was no report to see. What's changed is that the reporting, the conversations, the protests, the awareness of need has reached a peak where companies like ours are now getting flooded with inbound. This is the turning point now where we're getting contacted on a weekly basis by organizations saying, we want to integrate the variety of maternity services that we've deemed essential. We want to offer these to everyone. We want to connect them together that they are bundled and they are available to every new and expecting parent that comes through our community. That has been historically very difficult to do at the small and large level. We're getting contacted by some of the largest academic medical centers in the country and the largest public health systems in the country, but we're also getting contacted by local OBGYN offices and doula programs and a regional lactation group or practice saying the same thing. We can't do it alone. We realize there are challenges. We want to do it better and we want to do it with other people. Can you connect us together? And so the platform has become a sort of connected web of organizations that are doing this work together. And it's incredibly exciting to see it unfold. You mentioned it. The tide is turning. You're seeing those inbounds. That's when you know we have something here. And this is exciting, right? And I think you're right, that awareness, the conversation across the country, it's changing. It's changing rapidly. And from my perspective, what you just shared, this is a good thing for all of us. With that tide turning, with 
things starting to change direction a bit and the positive, you're getting those inbounds. Where do you see things heading, Melissa? Not only for you and the mommy team and what you guys are building, but where the marketplace is heading. Where are we going as a nation? We have some of the best thought leaders and industry leaders that tune in on this podcast. What do we need to be thinking about? What are some of those things that you're seeing on the front lines, tide changing, like we said? What do we need to be mindful of? Where do you see things heading? Again, not only just for mommy, but for the industry as well. Yeah, I will share what I'm seeing. I'll be curious to hear your thoughts on whether this tracks with other verticals or is it ahead or behind? I'd say I think there's a lot of movement happening now in maternal and child health care. And one of the biggest dynamics at play is around partnership and around thinking really progressively around, I mentioned earlier, public and private partnership, but even between software and hardware companies, between connected nursery sort of products, there's a lot of connected devices for parents. But where does the data go? It goes to your mobile device so you can track how many times your baby turned over over the night, how much milk was pumped through a connected breast pump. But a lot of this information can provide a much more complete picture of health, of patient engagement, of really predicting the outcomes that we want to see for all mother baby dyads. And it needs to be connected together with the rest of the health record, which I think should be portable and owned by the patient that there really is a more complete picture of mom and baby's health. One thing I'm really excited about is that we've begun to explore partnerships with other tech companies that are doing work in this space. I mentioned sort of connected devices. I think another place is around content and around community experiences because maternity and parenthood is a psychosocial experience as well. If we isolate it only to being a health concern and a health risk, we may over-problematize it. And we may not remember that being a new parent is also about being a part of a village that you're building as you and your child grow together. We also are exploring partnerships with all different types of companies that are in or are trying to contribute to the maternity and parenthood space. That kind of really, I would say, like increasing activity around partnership is very promising. What I'm seeing as a, another component of this is that as the pandemic has shifted providers' views on telehealth and digital tools, there's more interest in what's possible in, again, connecting together the healthcare experience of maternity and the psychosocial and sort of consumer experience of maternity. I would say that that's a little bit further back, you know, but providers are starting to ask that question. I think that that's very promising and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, you don't have to tell me twice, Melissa, at this time of recording, I am the vice president of partnerships at Olive or one of healthcare's newest unicorns. So trust me, I'm all in on partnerships. I believe it is the future. I believe this is going to be where we are going to be able to take healthcare to a new reality and create an industry that this nation deserves. We have some of the smartest and most passionate people on the face of this planet in this country. Don't tell me we cannot reimagine this industry, but we can do it by doing it together. Trust me, I'm all in on what you just said. I firmly believe that the power of partnerships and the power of togetherness are going to allow us to create that reality that so many people thought and think that we can't get there and move this industry forward. I have no doubt that we can do it when we do it together and have people like you leading the charge. So I love it. All in on that as well, Melissa. Now let's flip the script on you though. How can we be helping you? Where can our community be helping you and the team? So what's one problem need or question that you guys have that we can be thinking about? Well, I mentioned that we're doing a lot of work with community-based organizations nationwide. There are a variety of different types of programs and organizations that we work with. And we found to be a place where we can really start to foster that connectivity in a way that very quickly impacts the community for the better is at that ground level, working with folks that are right there in the community. I'd love to get connected with more people that are either building or participating in community-based programs focused on perinatal health, maternal mental health, pregnancy and postpartum support any of these kinds of topics, I can tell you that we've seen some really cool things happening just over the course of the pandemic. We've worked with a lot of organizations that have led the way on community-based maternal health programs since early on. And those are some of the earliest partners we have in our work. And it's very much led the design of the platform itself to be that connected web that creates those sort of partnerships and collaborative opportunities for providers. But what we're seeing, what happened during the pandemic is that people who had ideas to start new programs came to us and said, you know, I have a vision for something. I really want to introduce this kind of experience for new and expecting parents. I really want to do this kind of thing in pregnancy or in postpartum. 
or this kind of thing for parents of, I would say, whether infants or newborns or children that are developing six to 12 months and hitting those milestones and growing and changing. And so we said, yeah, bring your ideas and build with us. And so we've actually been helping people build entirely new programs and new businesses, not just public health organizations, but also private practices and other kinds of private groups being built on mommy for the first time. That's been one of the coolest things that I'd say has happened during the pandemic is that we're all kind of sitting at home feeling isolated and providers of all stripes came to us and said, I have an idea. I've been thinking about this for years and now might be the time to build it. That's what's been keeping us busy. And I'd love to meet more people like that. Well, in order to be able to meet you, Melissa, we need to be able to get a hold of you. Where are some contact points online, social media handles, websites, or otherwise? How can we get a hold of you? Well, you can email me directly. I'm happy to get emails from folks that are listening in. It's my name, Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, at mommy, M-A-H-M-E-E.com. That's the phonetic spelling of M-O-M-M-Y. So that's how it's pronounced. It's spelled M-A-H-M-E-E. You can also reach out to us on any of our social handles through Twitter, through Facebook, Instagram. We are at Get Mommy in any of those places and LinkedIn as well. So I'd say you can find us on a bunch of different channels and we'd love to really get connected with all of you. Thank you. Well, we'll leave all those contact points in the episode notes. So in your favorite podcast player, just simply scroll down and click on through to get a hold of Melissa and her team. We'll also have all those contact points over in our free global online community at passionatepioneers.com. There'll be an area where you can leave comments and feedback for Melissa and her team as well over again at passionatepioneers.com. All right, Melissa, we have one more segment. We'll get you out of here so you can get back to building mommy. I know you guys, again, doing some wonderful things, moving fast and uh, continuing to deliver amazing product technology and hope into the marketplace. But before we let you go, got to fill in the blank for you. I'm a passionate pioneer because I love fostering impactful partnerships and collaborations. I love it. I love it. Well, Melissa, thank you for taking a pit stop today. And I know we have a mutual friend with Taylor McPartland down there, CEO of Scale Health. Make sure you tell him hi when you see him next. I know people are starting to go back to the office there at Scale Health, and you guys are a part of that incredible community down in, in Southern California. Make sure you give my good friend Taylor a big hi for me. But for now, Melissa, Will do. thank you so much for being with us today, for sharing your story and everything happening in the mommy camp. We look forward to continuing to follow your journey, supporting you along the way. But for now, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.